As we get started, I just want to thank the GovCon Chamber of Commerce sustaining members. Uh, we take no federal dollars and we take no large prime dollars, right? Everything that we offer is because of the sustaining members that we have. And so we want to say thank you because it's all uh, possible due to you and due to your generosity. If you're not a sustaining member, consider becoming one when you can, right? When it feels right to you, become a sustaining member. We'd love to have you in there. Um, okay, we're, we're going to dive into today's topic. Let me just turn off my little scroll bar here. If this is your first time, I tend to move at a pretty fast pace. Uh, you can watch the replay, but my goal is to always give you tactical advice that you can follow, steps that you can take immediately following this training, uh, sometimes during the training. In this lesson, I wanna talk to you about the importance of knowing your buyer's process and how they buy, right? If you don't know how a buyer buys, then you're gonna um, be leaving a lot on the table. And what I mean by a lot is you won't hear about uh, what their requirements they have, opportunities you can pursue because you don't understand how they buy and when to get engaged. When you don't know what they buy, you're going to operate from um, this whole idea of reactionary, right? I was just saying, are you proactive or reactionary? You're going to operate from a reactionary state. And the easiest way to understand when you're in a reactionary state is if you're learning about opportunities in SAM. Uh, if you're learning about them then, then you're reacting to the RFP being dropped. But if you learn about opportunities way earlier, if you're engaged with a customer building relationships, et cetera, now you're running out of, um, you're, you're pursuing this customer from a proactive state. And that's what I meant at the beginning when I was saying proactive compared to reactive. Um, and it's important for you to just drive your sales from a proactive standpoint. So if you follow me and if you believe that proactive in what you're doing on a daily basis is really important. Put that in the chat, right? Just put be proactive in the chat. Um, when you are proactive on the buyer process, when you understand the buyer process, and I'm going to teach you today exactly how to do that, uh, how to know so much more about how the government buys. But when you do that, it's going to help you with your capture activities and your um, proposal activities. And that's what I want you to be able to do is to have a much more control over uh, your success, frankly, in the federal government, but certainly in the capture and proposal part of the, the house. If you don't know who I am, my name is Neil McDonald. I'm the president of the GovCon Chamber of Commerce. And I want to welcome you to my daily LinkedIn Live federal sales training where I teach tips for success in the federal market. I spent 20 years as a small business owner in the federal market. And since 2018, I've been teaching people like you that government contracting is not a secret. It's just a process. When you follow a process, it's you're going to get repeatable success. When you go from A to Z, you're going to have repeatable, predictable success. And that's what I want for you. Do me a favor, put process in the chat if you understand how important that is. Um, before we get started, help buyers remember who you are. Let them know your company name and your core competency. Two or three words about your core competency helps sink it into the uh, mind of the buyer, into my mind, and into the people who are in this community with you. Um, if you're out there on LinkedIn, Facebook, and other platforms, they're great platforms, but come into LinkedIn and connect with me and connect with others on LinkedIn so that you can actually begin to build relationships and have, um, have conversations that move forward. Last thing I want to say is uh, tag a friend into the chat. Tag a friend. Let them know about this training. Just do it right now if you can. Put a at symbol, right? Type an at symbol and then the person's first name and then last name, right? And as you type that, LinkedIn will show you that name. And when you do this, you're inviting one friend into the group. Right now, there's about 60, 70 people on training across these different platforms. If each of us invites one person, then all of us potentially are going to meet 50 new people at least. That's what I want for you is to build this community. It's your community, but we need your help uh, on inviting others to come on in. So uh, I want you to be able to meet 50 new, um, 50 new connections, and some of them will tie directly to what you sell. So we're going to dive through a lot. I'm going to share my screen from this point forward, um, and I'm going to try to bounce around. I am going to show you different documents, um, not my slides, but if the government documents that I show you, if you want them, you can let me know later that, uh, hey, can you send that to me? And I will. Uh, just let me know in the chat as I go along if you see something you want me to share it. So let me just set up my screen so I can share it with you. Okay, you should see my screen. Um, I've done a whole nother training on shifting left in the acquisition life cycle. And so this slide I'm showing you is a basically a roadmap that we created. It's a handout that we use to teach people the acquisition life cycle. But I've done a whole other training that was 30 minutes just on this one slide. And so you can watch that. But at a high level, 
I wanted to start with showing you how I talk about the acquisition lifecycle uh, tied together with the sales lifecycle. One is the buyer, one is the seller. Um, I want to show you that. And then I want to show you how the government does it. And so um, here, one of the big things I just want you to pay attention to is right where you see the idea. When the government has an idea, a program office person has that idea, they explore the requirements and then do market research. After they've uh, exhausted the market research activity they need to do, they drop an RFP out to industry looking for bids and proposals, right? And from there, they do award and execution. And what I try to communicate here is that there's informal market research that happens when they're just having ideas in their head. And some of the ways that you might be able to shape or influence that idea generation or the ideation um, is through white papers and having meetings with them, going to conferences and, and presenting information. Um, this is how you can get in there. And to me, that's business development, right? And then um, market research is more formally driven by the FAR and, and uh, guidelines they have to follow. And in this particular process, you're solidly in capture if you think about the uh, sales life cycle. And the top arrow I'm just trying to say is if you shift left in the sales life cycle or the acquisition life cycle, you have much more influence on the opportunities you're trying to win. You have much more um, influence and engagement with the relationships that you're building. The relationships are stronger and they're able to talk to you more because the farther left in an acquisition, the more okay it is to talk with industry. Um, and so then as you'll write, it obviously goes down. I write the word weak because the minute you get to RFP, theoretically government can't talk to you anymore. It's just uh, into this fairness phase. So keep this roadmap in mind. By the way, put shift left into the chat if you understand that you need to shift left away from the RFP to the idea. The closer to the idea you can get to that little light bulb, the more chance you have at winning, right? So you want to shift left, put shift left in the chat. Um, if you'd like a copy of this, let me know. I can send it to you as a handout. Two other slides I want to show you here now are related to DOD, and they're just designed to show you how many buyers there are. I've showed this slide in multiple trainings, and I love it because this is from 2018. It actually says 157,000 buyers or acquisition personnel. Um, now it's 185,000, and this is DOD alone. But when you think about the entire federal government, there's a lot of buyers. But bring it down to just your agency, and you want to kind of begin to understand how many people are influencing the buyer's life cycle? And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean using more government documents in a second. Um, beginning with this one, the way DOD tries to communicate how they buy is by showing this roadmap that says, look, in the beginning, um, the acquisition cuts across multiple functional areas and people who are engaged on working on that contract. So there's planning the requirements where I was saying the idea, um, the light bulb, right? And then cost estimating, Budgeting, so cost estimating is like that independent cost, government cost estimate. They're trying to guess what it's going to cost us. And then, well, do we have the money for it? It goes into budgeting. Um, and then moving into program management and um, basically execution. And the idea from this slide, what I'm trying to communicate really quick before I go further into the process, is that there are a lot of people who are engaged in the acquisition life cycle within an agency. There's acquisition uh, personnel. These are the contracting officers, contract specialists, et cetera. They're in acquisition career fields. And then there's all sorts of other people like this planning and requirements. Generally, none of those people are in the acquisition side. They're in the cyber side or they're in the construction side, right? They're in the program office doing that job. The contracting and the acquisition personnel are helping them buy from industry what they need to buy. And so as you start looking around at how the government buys, I'm going to talk to you about a process, but I want you to keep in mind that there are a lot of people who are engaged in that purchase decision and you want to begin to understand who they are. Um, so anyways, I'm going to come down to this next slide, which is, I think, one of my all-time favorite slides. This is what I wanted when I was running my two companies, uh, 20, you know, over 20-year period, just this understanding and this is why I say government contracting is not a secret. It's just a process because this roadmap was a secret. People would just kind of keep this information to themselves. They keep uh, people's names and numbers to themselves. And, and the reason we break down that down is because it just sucks. <laughs> it's like people should share that information. And when USDA shared this out with a few of us who were going after an opportunity, I was determined to share this with every single person I could that just says, look, this is the journey that USDA says that they follow as they go along through an acquisition. And so I want to talk about it. I can't 
talk about it in massive depth, but I want to point out the things that are really important to me. The first thing is, you see right here at the very end, bottom left, it says award. Come all the way to the right here and where it has another stop. And here's the final solicitation is sent out. So basically the RFP drops where the stop is. Um, the reason this is important is because what I find is a lot of people play in this bottom right-hand corner. And when I say shift left, I don't just mean shift to the RFI or something, but just keep coming all the way around this entire roadmap, all the way to the team formation. You can put a, a um, light bulb right here at the beginning of the left arrow that starts this acquisition journey. Somebody has an idea and a team begins to get formed within the agency, within the program office to explore that um, idea, right? I don't wanna speak for the government on what each of these do, but if you follow along, the next big one for me or for industry is that there's this market research activity that happens. They do sources sought, RFIs. They're engaging with industry in this, in this market research vendor engagement um, box. And then right out of that, they're doing this market research report. They're saying, hey, we did market research. This is what we discovered. What they discovered influences their technical requirements and their acquisition approach. What NAICS codes they go use, what contracting vehicles, set it aside to woman-owned, all that. That's coming out of this market research um, box right here on the right. And what I want you to think about, uh, depending on what level you are in, in your company growth, right? But get left of even the market research if you can. Be in and build relationships with the very program offices you want to sell to that you want to win opportunities a year from now. Keep in mind, if you start today and, you, and you're and aiming for a year from now, every point after that year, you'll be able to sell month after month after month because you put a year's worth of work in. And I don't mean it takes that long. I, you know, I can get into an agency in 90 days, but I mean, think the long haul. You want a lot of money from the government for contracts, right? Uh, put the time in, but you want to be able to shift left. Okay, so let me come along here. This roadmap is beautiful. It's explaining what they're doing. Um, right here on this dark blue one on the second row, it says develop the independent government cost estimate. This is when they're thinking about, well, how much is this gonna cost us, right? We wanna be finding out what they're thinking. This is capture, right? Part of it is they're gonna kind of keep it to themselves. Part of it is you can influence um, what they're thinking about it's gonna capture. When you respond to a market research, you can even suggest what it's gonna cost. You know, hey, in, in whatever way that fits for you, but you can begin to influence the requirements, they're thinking on the cost, they're thinking on um, what should be in the FAR clauses, any of these things you can influence. But the, um, the other thing, so you see at the far left, it's acquisition strategy formation. This is where they're taking what they're hearing and they're beginning to decide um, how they're gonna uh, pursue it, what I was talking about, right? Which contract vehicle, whether it's firm fixed price or TNM or something. Um, and then just continuing along, it's the same decisions. I don't wanna go too far here because I got another document that's even bigger I wanna show you. But the one big thing I wanted to tell you about this roadmap, which is just uh, awesome, is that I often hear companies that I work with complain about how the government keeps shifting things to the right. You know, oh, we expected the RFP to shift to, uh, to, to be on this day and it shifted to the right. And what I would submit is that too many of us are dependent on GovWin's estimated dates. No government person said, hey, here's the date and you put it in your pipeline and then it shifted. That's rare that that happens, right? But what is more important is you create your own date for when this is gonna be um, released, right? When this final solicitation, and you create that date by understanding your customer's journey map for an acquisition. If you understand this and you realize through your meeting with a contract specialist or officer that they haven't even done an independent government cost estimate, then there's a good chance that it's not gonna come out when you originally thought and you can adjust that date. You don't wait and keep going, oh, the date moved on me, oh, the date moved on me, and I don't know why. I want you to learn what's the journey for your agency, your target agency. Learn what these steps are. They're not always identical, um, but what are they and what are some of the timelines? You're not gonna find this out in one meeting. You wanna get in and build relationships with your 
contracting officers, with the, um, the cores, the small business specialists. And you begin to learn this. So you begin to get an idea that once the acquisition plan is done, does it go to legal? Does Do people have to look at it there? And then it gets approved. Where's the approval process where then it moves forward again? So each one of these steps, you want to understand them for your target agency. If you do, you will have a pipeline that has more reliable dates for when the RFPs drop in. And usually the award is you know, on, on relatively small, under 10, 20 million, um, it's usually like 60, 90 days or something, 60 to 120 days for award. Well, you can start predicting the revenue coming in. Okay, let me shift to a different thing here. Uh, this one, let me go up. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, stick with me one second because I didn't start it. So this is the VA's acquisition process, by the way. Um, by the way, uh, if you like what USDA's roadmap is, and you want to copy that, put USDA journey map or just USA map in the chat. Um, and I'll send you a copy of that. That's their document, but happy to share it with you because I don't, I could never find it on the web anywhere. Um, here, the last one I want to talk to you about, I'm just looking at my time, got 12 minutes is um, the VA has this document. I think I'm sharing this entire document out tomorrow, the next day. I'm happy to send you where I got it. You know, so I'm, if you want the URL, let me know. But in here, this is their acquisition process for um, how they buy, right? And so they're just uh, sharing the acquisition process. I want to walk through this and have you see it in a different way than that roadmap journey, but still understand that you can learn about the VA or you can learn about um, FEMA or Department of Education's acquisition process. This is part of business development. When you go into an agency and you're learning about the agency, you want to learn not just what do you do, what do you buy? But how do you buy? And taking the time to understand that. So um, here's just a slide saying what they buy. Now, this slide here is pretty uh, uh, intense. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time. But what I wanted to show you is basically they break up their pre-award into four phases. And knowing that, I'm going to be tracking with the VA, if that's my customer, where they're at. And so here you can see where they're talking about the requirements and they're building it. They're doing information uh, RFIs and sources sought, et cetera. They're telling me what's going on and they're asking for ROMs from uh, industry, right? So this activity, I can understand where an opportunity is and then it moves into where they start um, engaging further, right? So solicitations when it drops and evaluations when they're looking at the uh, proposals. But the part you want to play in there, the part you really can play in are these two requirement definition and pre-solicitation and planning phases. I'm going to show you where it's broken down more but it's important when you have an agency and they're explaining this, that you ask them to explain it more. When they talk about um, acquisition strategy, well, what does that mean? Who's involved in the acquisition strategy? Is there somebody who is the final sign off? Is it, is it the head of contracting? Do you have to get legal to sign off on it? Understanding that will allow you to understand the timeline that goes into opportunities. Um, this next one, this is coming from GAO, but it's so much easier to understand um, and the VA put it in, but it's the acquisition planning and contracting milestones. And here it does a little different, right? So here they're talking about the pre-solicitation and procurement requested approval where the slash line is, is where the RFP dropped, right? But the part I want you to pay attention to is, excuse me, it's right over here on at the other side. Um, but paying attention to how they roll this out. They've got a pre-solicitation phase and then they're doing additional market research. Then they move into the solicitation and and managing the offers, you can begin to talk to your agency, your target agency customer and ask them, can you walk me through what your process is like um, for your agency? This is a real high level to do it. This one here is a little bit more complicated. What you're trying to get is this. You want to get them to tell you what this is. You don't need them to draw it if they don't have it, but you can begin to build it and you can use this almost as a, a template to ask the questions. Do you do... Um, where are we? Do you do an acquisition approach brief? Yes. Who do you brief that to? To the industry? To yourselves? Okay. So let me come down here. A couple more slides. It really builds on it. So the next one is, as I'm understanding each step of the process, one of the other things I want to understand is who's engaged in each one of those steps. How do I begin to learn um, who's there? There's a reason large primes hire people directly out of the, the government when they're retiring or coming out of the military because they know their entire process and they can go back in and they know many of the people they're talking to, right? They have a separation, whatever time is there, but the reason they're so valuable is they know the process and they know the roles that people fall into. Well, you want to understand this as well, right? These are specific roles that you should be paying attention to as it relates to market research. 
And then as you come down, um, this next slide is talking about the extent that market research varies depending on what they need. So if there's a sense of urgency, they might do a three day turnaround or something on market research. And they're just trying to see if there's any women owned firms that are going to respond, something like that. Um, they might be trying to figure out what is this cost? We have this big requirement, but we don't know what it is. And so the reason this is important is you want to ask your customer, how do you do business? And let me pause for one second and make sure you understand. There's some businesses that all you do is respond to RFPs or write proposals. That's just task order type things. That's not sales at all. That's just writing a proposal to something. That's bids, but fancy. Sales is about understanding the customer, understanding their needs, how they buy. That's what I'm trying to teach you here with this is that if you want to do better at winning contracts, and I mean, when you start aiming for things that are 10 million, 100 million, right? Even a billion dollars, depending on where you're at. If you're trying to go after more opportunities, then you really need to understand your customer. And here's the VA explaining it to us. Um, here they talk about something that's really important that I liked when I was showing you that one slide with a table that said requirements definition. And you look about who's in there and here they talk about an integrated product team. When I see this, I want to find out who is that program manager leading the IPT, right? If I find out who that is and I begin to find out who the members are, I can begin to have conversations with them about their challenges, their objectives, what I'm thinking about solutioning, right? This is all capture when you get to this stage. This is all captured because it's about an opportunity. Um, and so you want to engage with these people and figure out who's on the IPT. That's competitive uh, advantage when you can get in there and understand it. And the only way you're going to learn who's on the IPT is if you already have begun to build relationships. This is why I tell you uh, when you think about the seven step process that we teach for federal success, it's research, targeting, outreach. Those three lead to building solid relationships, strategic relationships that you can go back to over and over again as you pursue opportunities, write proposals to win, right? That's that seven step process. Um, so here they're just talking about how they do the acquisition, what they're trying to reach out to. They talk about how the, um, the market research forms down. This is part of their process, understanding how they do it and where you might get engaged, right? You talk about decision-making. How does that happen within your agency? Can I get in and talk with people during market research who are decision makers, or am I gonna be constantly blocked by a contract specialist or a small business specialist, right? Those people are gatekeepers. The real person I wanna to talk to is not them, it's the program office, the person with the need who's gonna use my service or my product, right? Your service, your product. Um, and then coming farther down, you just see different things that they're, uh, talking about their ways of doing market research, you begin to understand um, how they do it, right? So here, if I look at this one, it says we review product literature as part of our market research. Perfect. We have product literature. How do I make sure it gets in front of you so that when I'm not knocking on your door, you still have access to it? Like, where do you go to get product literature? Is it only me bringing it to you? Talking with your target agency, like I'm working with a customer who's going after the uh, medical health service, right? We're going to teach them exactly this kind of stuff, where to uh, reach out, who to reach out to, where to make sure that you're visible when the buyers are looking, right? And so seeing this and understanding how the agency works gives you this depth of understanding of the process that they flow through. Um, here, they, this is the next part I like, right? Is this is really important for you to understand why is the government, why is the buyer doing what they do? Why are you doing market research? What do you expect to get out of it? Well, you know, do you, do capable sources exist? Are there enough women owned small businesses that if I set this aside, I'd feel like I would get back um, a, a sufficient amount of proposals that I would have um, uh, proposals that I could award to and, and be fine, right? So are there enough women owned businesses that can do the work? Um, what's the current market price, right? Part of the results of market research is we're trying to figure out what's the what's the pricing we should be thinking about it. Sometimes you'll see the government coming out with ROMs as part of their market research. And this is the idea, right? But my favorite is at the bottom. Do we need to modify the requirements? Are we thinking the right way? This is why I tell you to get fully engaged in an RFI and a source of sought because it's when the government is trying to learn from you the most. They see you as the expert. They're not the expert, they're the buyer. They're going to the experts to buy your products and services. And so you wanna make sure you're communicating anything with them at this phase. Don't wait for the RFP because it gets too hard at that point to change anybody's mind. So um, let me pause and come back here. I'm going to stop sharing. I would stop it on that one guy. But I want to come back just for a second and really drive home this idea that 
what I want you to do from this training, right, is you're targeting a particular agency, Department of Education or the Army. Go in, speak to your buyer and begin to learn what is their process for acquisition. How do they buy things? And understanding the way they step through allows you and your team to understand where you should go and what you should provide at different stages to be able to either shape, like shape the requirements or influence um, the direction they're going, both the requirements and the acquisition approach. If you do this, you will find that you start winning more because you're aligning yours, your sales cycle, your capture activities, you're aligning those to the acquisition process the government um, follows, right? When they're buying things, it's really important to have those uh, those things align so that you can actually um, start speaking the government's message. Okay, so um, if you found it valuable, do me a favor. Uh, don't don't bother putting thanks. If you found this valuable today, in the chat, put um, process rocks because we're talking about understanding the government's process for buying. And if you understand it, you will start winning more. And to me, that makes process something that rocks. So put process rocks in as a way of saying you fully understand what we we're trying to teach here. Make sure you visit the LinkedIn profile, um, my LinkedIn profile, and sign up for uh, our newsletters. Connect with me, obviously, but sign up for the newsletter. But I'm sharing that VA document I just shared today. Um, that thing is going out as a post. I post something every single day that's like this, that is teaching you about the agencies that are out there that hopefully accelerate your learning into your customers. So uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and hit the bell notification. You'll be notified when I post new stuff. And of course, you know, process rocks, right? So remember, government contracting is not a secret. It is just a process. Part of the process is coming back to the next training. I will see you at the next one.